Hello! In today's lesson, we're looking at Chapter 2, Section 6, Proving Statements About Angles. Our objectives are to use angle congruence properties and prove properties about special pairs of angles. Theorem 2.2, Properties of Angles Congruence. Angle congruence is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Reflexive. For an angle A, angle A is congruent to angle A. What this means is if I have a triangle or any shape that shares the same angle, this angle over here is the same measure for the yellow triangle as it is for this aqua triangle. Symmetric. If angle A is congruent to angle B, then we can switch places and just say angle B is congruent to angle A. Transitive. If angle A is congruent to angle B and angle B is congruent to angle C, then we can get rid of the middle guy, which is angle B, and just say that angle A is congruent to angle C. Example 1, using the transitive property. In the diagram at the right, angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. So the way we show angle congruence is by the number of arcs, or like could say rainbows. So angle 1 and angle 5 are congruent. And angle 5 is congruent to angle 3. Since angle 5 has one arc, I'm just going to draw one arc around angle 3. And the measure of angle 1 is 103 degrees. So I'm going to write that down. What is the measure of angle 3? Explain your reasoning. Because angle 1 is congruent to angle 5 and angle 5 is congruent to angle 3, we can get rid of the middle guy by using the transitive property to conclude that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Because congruent angles have the same measure, you can conclude that the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 1, which is 103 degrees. So if angle 1 is 103, so is angle 3 because it's the same as angle 1. And the measure of angle 3 is 103 degrees. Checkpoint problem number one, use the diagram from example one, given that angle four is congruent to angle six, so these two angles are congruent, and angle six is congruent to angle eight, and the measure of angle eight is 77 degrees, what is the measure of angle four? Explain your reasoning. Theorem 2.3, right angle congruence theorem. All right angles are congruent. This is because all right angles have the same measure, which is 90 degrees. Theorem 2.4, congruent supplements theorem. If two angles are supplementary to the same angle or to congruent angles, then they are congruent. Remember, supplementary means the two angles add up to 180 degrees. If measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees and the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 is equal to 180 degrees, I can get rid of the measure of angle 2 using the transitive property and just say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Theorem 2.5, congruent complements theorem. If two angles are complementary to the same angle or to congruent angles, then the two angles are congruent. Complementary means the two angles add up to 90 degrees. If the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 90 degrees, and the measure of angle 5 plus the measure of angle 6 equals 90 degrees, get rid of the middle guy, which is the measure of angle 5, and we can say that angle 4 is congruent to angle 6. Example 2, Proving Theorem 2.5. We are given that angle 1 and angle 2 are complements, which means they add up to 90 degrees, and angle 3 and angle 4 are complements, which means they add up to 90 degrees, and that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4, so their measures are the same. We want to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, so we want to prove that these two angles are congruent. We start with what we're given. We're given that angle 1 and angle 2 are complements, angle 3 and angle 4 are complements, and angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. We know that when angles are complements, that means that their measures add up to 90 degrees. So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 90 degrees, and the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 add up to 90 degrees. That's the definition of complementary angles. Notice I have 90 degrees in both of them, so I can get rid of the 90 degrees and just say that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4. That's using the transitive property of equality. Since we know that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4, that means that their angle measures are the same, so we can say that the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 4, 
That's the definition of congruent angles. Building off of four, knowing that the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle four, I can replace this measure of angle four with the measure of angle two and rewrite this equation as the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle two. That's using the substitution property of equality. If I subtract the measure of angle 2 from both sides, those go away, and that's using the subtraction property of equality, which gives me the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. And since the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3, then angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, and that's using the definition of congruent angles. Postulate 12, linear pair postulate. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. The measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees. Vertical angles theorem. Vertical angles are congruent. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, and angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. So we know that this angle over here, angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent, and angle 2 and angle 4 are congruent. You can tell congruency, which angles are congruent by the number of, I would say, rainbows or, or arcs between the angles. So since 1 and 3 only have one arc or rainbow, those two are congruent. 2 and 4 have two arcs or rainbows, then those two are congruent. Example 3, using linear pairs and vertical angles. In the diagram, angle 3 is a right angle, and the measure of angle 5 is 57 degrees. So this angle over here is 57 degrees. Find the measures of angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, and angle 4. Angle 3 is easy. They told us it's a right angle, and we know that the measure of a right angle is 90 degrees, so the measure of angle 3 is 90 degrees. Angle 2 and angle 5 are vertical angles. They are across from each other. If the measure of angle 5 is equal to 57 degrees, so the measure of angle 2 is equal to 57 degrees. Angle 1 and angle 5 form a linear pair. They are on a straight line right over here. So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 180 degrees. When you substitute 57 for the measure of angle 5 and solve for the measure of angle 1, which looks like this, and you subtract 57 on both sides, you get that the measure of angle 1 is 123 degrees. Angle 4 and angle 5 are complementary because we know that this angle over here is 90 degrees, then we know that 4 plus 5 has to equal 90 degrees too. So the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 90 degrees. When you substitute 57 for the measure of angle 5 and solve for angle 4, which looks like this, subtract 57 on both sides, you get that the measure of angle 4 is 33 degrees. All right, checkpoint problems number two and three are yours. Checkpoint problem number two, find the measure of angle one and the measure of angle two. Let me give you a hint. This line over here is a straight line, and we know in straight lines the angles add up to 180 degrees, and they are a linear pair, so Use that to find the measure of angle 1 and maybe the measure of angle 2. Angle 3, find the measure of each angle. First you need to find the value of x, and once you figure out what the value of x is, then plug it into each of the variable expressions to find the measure of the angle. Again, remember that this is a straight line, and we know that in a line there are linear pairs, so the angles add up to 180 degrees. Alright, that's it from me. I'll see you all soon.